So this is gonna be a talking head. Um, I couldn't bring myself to sit here, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting here instead, uh, sort of in the corner. So talking head alert. Uh, 2022 is about to end. What in my career was I able to do this year that actually helped my career the most? Uh, we're going to talk about that. Let's get right into it. It's going to make me want to take a wire brush to my skin as an introvert to say this, but it's putting yourself out there uh, was the most important thing I did this year to help my career. And uh, I wish that wasn't the case. Filmmaking, creative stuff, it's not a meritocracy. It's just not. So the sooner the sooner you can digest that, uh, the sooner you can you can actually get to get to work. You know, work on your career. Uh, at the end of last year, I was coming off a show as a PA, and I decided not to continue. I decided to sort of take stock of my career and start cold submitting to places just to see if they needed somebody. Um, I'm a colorist. I'm also very comfortable operating and behind camera, so I've I'm not a spring chicken. Um, but I cold submitted to some places and crazy to me i heard back um it was straight white guy on tinder numbers so it was less than 10 percent, but it wasn't zero and um the, acknowledging there were a couple people that basically told me to crawl back into my hole and die and that i'm i'm a i'm an idiot and a child and how dare they contact me on this number um you know short of that i, I got some good contacts uh i i ended up getting some gigs out of it actually getting quite a few gigs um, so much so that there, I've, there's a company that I worked for cold, uh, in August and I've done three gigs with them now. So, uh, you know, putting yourself out there works, I guess, uh, speaking just for a second about the people who told me to crawl back into my hole and die. Um, you know, feelings hurt. Humans have feelings. I'm not, I'm not, not a human. Uh, but I will say I'm grateful to hear back that this, that this particular person that I'm thinking of is, was a jerk to me because... Um, no jerks on set. I have a spreadsheet of companies and people I refuse to work for. And every time I'm up for a job, I make sure that to cross reference to make sure I don't end up on set with those kind of people because, um, some of the longest, most horrible days on set, uh, are when earlier on in the, in the day, you realize you're working with a jerk. Uh, it's life's too short. And so thank you to the people who told me to crawl into a hole and die. I look forward to never working with you guys. Um, Thank God I know I know ahead of being on set, but yeah, I, I got some I got some work out of it uh, just by cold submitting. I was really surprised. Um, so it works. Uh, anecdote time, you know, a decade ago when I was in my early twenties, I worked in LA at a production company. Uh, I was a PA, and the the thing to do, the thing that everybody told me was network, meet people. That's how you're going to go ahead and go further in your career. And uh, so they have assistant meetups, they have PA meetups, they have all these kind of things. And I did it and I hated every second of it. Um, introverted, but also just a uh, gross, um, you know, it's all the cliches. It's, it's hi, who are you? What can you do for me? It was, it was those, it was that handshake every single time. And I did it for about 18 months and I had like a physical reaction, negative reaction to it every single time. Cause I just, I, I, I hate it. Um, and at the time I thought it was just cause I was a weirdo and, um, uh, you know, the second I the second I stopped doing it and my quality of life took a took a huge upswing, I realized uh, whether or not I'm a weirdo. I it's not you know the whole the whole meeting for drinks thing is not is not my thing. Um, credit where credits due. The people that are really social, the people that you know like to go to these mixers and these meetups that are incredibly awkward and super weird. But these people, there's a certain kind of person that thrives, and uh, I can't fault it because I've seen people in my life have wildly successful careers basically because of, you know, they're, they're good in it. They're good in a handshake. They're good at a, a happy hour. Um, it ain't me. So, um, filmmaking is not a merit meritocracy. No, nothing is, uh, it's just, it just isn't. So yeah. So putting myself out there, that whole thing. The other thing is, uh, you know, elephant in the room. In March, I started a YouTube channel, and so you know, I guess you could say that's putting yourself out there. If you've seen my stuff, I don't, I don't know if putting yourself out there is a good way to describe what I do, but yeah, that's true too. So I decided to start a YouTube channel. Um, at the six month mark, I really sat down and and looked at the numbers and really, you know, had some come to Jesus conversation with myself about whether or not it was worth continuing, and I came to the conclusion that uh, I don't have enough information, and so I have to push back the decision date. Um, 
I'm not even sure I'm going to have a decision date at this point. It's, it seems like I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, the, I, I've found weirdly YouTube offers me something that I didn't know I was missing, but now that I'm doing it, I can't imagine a life without it. Like, is that what love is? I don't know. Um, I'm obviously not getting crazy numbers and, and, you know, uh, I've, I'm not even to the, to the thousand monetized mark, not even close, but I figured out that the, that the, the expectation that I would make a couple of videos a week, the, the come up with an idea, make it, put it out there, get feedback earlier on. I was not getting much feedback, which was tricky because, you know, the algorithm didn't seem to know much about me. And so I didn't have anybody telling me whether or not anything I was doing was worthwhile. So that wasn't super useful, but I'm at a place now where if I post something, somebody will tell me their opinion, which is better than nothing. Um, but just the process of constantly conceiving, making, putting it out there, feedback, and then the ability to sort of close the book on it and move on has been astoundingly creatively satisfying. Um, I've, you know, since, since I was 16, I've been writing screenplays and, uh, you know, constantly developing ideas, developing pitches, that kind of thing. But that's, that's like a, a singular thing. That's the thing you do in, in the quiet, in the dark. Um, but to, to do this YouTube thing where it's, it's a different format. It's not necessarily hinging completely on something like dialogue or something like you know, screen direction or any of that kind of stuff where you can sort of, there's, it's, it's a different kind of format has been incredibly satisfying for just keeping the, keeping the creative juices flowing, keeping the, keeping me sharp. Um, I've found that I found that I'm most happy when I'm creatively sharp and historically the way I've been doing that has been reading just crazy scripts. Every time I get a gig as a screenplay reader, I'm happier because I'm reading, you know, X amount of pages a day. And it's making me it's 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 making me a better writer. It's making me a more critical thinker. That kind of thing. Um, YouTube has kind of supplanted that a little bit. Uh, with the with the other you know variable being, it'd be nice if this channel had a little bit of success, a little bit of momentum. And every so often, it feels like I'm getting momentum, and then it cools off. So um, I've been through the up and down a few times enough that I, I my ego is pretty much out of it at this point. Thank God. Um, uh, also, I've I've definitely. So when I was in LA early on, I was in a really dark place and somebody told me that, I, th I think this is actually from a show, but somebody told me that uh, LA, Hollywood, it's a mirror. And so whatever you put in front of the mirror, that's what you're going to see. And that was like the worst news I could have heard at that moment in my life. Um, but I kind of agree. And I think YouTube also is a bit of a mirror in that uh, what you put into it, you're going to get out. So uh, the easiest way to describe that is if you... I, I, my most successful videos remain and they're privated now because I've decided I'm not about that life, but my most successful videos have been sort of a, a take, a negative take or like a non majority of people's opinions take. Uh, I put it out there, you know, it's aggressive take and I, and it amplifies and I get this huge amount of aggression and mostly anger back with the occasional person going, you're doing it, which I don't even know if that's uh, all that helpful, but you know, you put in bad, you get it amplified and bad, thrown back in your face. And I always did believe you put in good, it amplifies, you throw it back in your face. I hadn't really benefited from that until lately. I got a couple moments where people, like a few people in a row were like, hey, this is great. Keep doing this, uh, which is nice. Thank you. I can also see though how if, I can see how certain YouTubers, if they accidentally had success early or if, if, something they, if the very first thing they did that took off got all positive reactions, how they don't have the sort of the balancing of the scales, you know, the check yourself of it all. And you'd start drinking your own Kool-Aid and you start losing your relatability. I can see that happening for sure. So I'm kind of glad that hasn't happened to me, but I'm definitely aware that if I put something that has sort of a negative or a menacing tone out, it gets amplified and it gets it comes back at me. And again, human being with feelings, uh, blurg. So lesson learned, but yeah, for the most part, it seems like the closer I am to, I wouldn't say authenticity, but closer I am to what I'm trying to do, which I do think I'm pretty close at this point with my YouTube channel. I'm getting, I'm getting more accurate and more predictable feedback on it. And it's positive feedback. It's starting to become positive feedback, which is really, which is really heartening. I have to say. So, um, 
you know, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep experimenting because I do think YouTube for me is is the sandbox. It always has been. I've been putting stuff on YouTube since YouTube started, but this year in 2022 was the first time ever that I genuinely did like an honest college try on building a channel. All, all the times before that, it was just a place for me to put reels and short films I made and just goofy stuff that you could put up on the internet. Um, but yeah, now that I'm, now that I'm taking it, you know, from a business point a little bit more seriously, uh, it's been, it's been incredibly satisfying on the creative side and it's, it's predictable enough now. Like I'm starting to understand it and, or the algorithm is starting to interact with me a little bit now that I'm, I'm beginning to be able to predict kind of most of the time, but not always the time. If I come up with an idea, make a video about it, put it out there, I kind of know how the video is going to go. I've been wrong still, you know, and I don't think that's ever going to change, but it's, it's making me optimistic about, about the channel moving forward that, um, I definitely haven't hacked it. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not proving the gurus right by any means, but I am, I am figuring out my voice in it and it is, it's starting to, I'm starting to have people say, Hey, I like what you're doing, which I, you know, I thank you guys for doing that because, um, it, when you get in, when you get no's every single time you put stuff up, uh, it doesn't, it, it, you know, at some point you go, is this worth it? So I appreciate, I appreciate the, I appreciate the small amount of attention you guys give me. Um, I hope I'm doing right by you guys. So all of this to say 2022, what was the best thing I did for, for my, for my stuff, for my work, for my journey, put yourself out there, which sucks. I hate, I hate that. That's a lesson. Um, I hate that at this age that that's a lesson. Um, and then secondly, the other thing is, uh, I made a concerted effort this year to work on lighting. And, um, again, this ties into the YouTube thing. I, if you've seen any of my videos, the lighting basically changes video to video. And that's because I've been trying all sorts of lighting. I didn't come, I didn't come completely blind into it because I'm a colorist. So a lot of that is lighting, but yeah, I made, I made a real effort this year to work on my technical abilities when it comes to lighting. And I am very satisfied with that. And I credit a lot of that to the fact that because I had this impetus to make YouTube videos, I had the opportunity to experiment with lights, found a lot of dead ends creatively, both in YouTube videos and in lighting. But, uh, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm building a pretty robust Rolodex when it comes to lighting and camera stuff, um, that, you know, when I, when I inevitably go on a, go on a short film or a feature film or something that, that I have control over, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be panicking. I'm gonna be able to get on set and say, Hey, we're gonna do it this way because this is how, this is how I'm, we're going to light it. Um, yeah. So overall optimistic, uh, I, you know, I'm still convinced the YouTube algorithm has a, has a beef with me, but yeah, I'm not getting total silence, which is great because now I can test my, my absolutely crazy inconsistent ideas and see which ones work and which ones don't. And that, hasn't been the case for most of the life of this channel thus far. So, um, thank you guys for, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for appreciating me. Oh, there's one more thing. Uh, I do want to mention YouTube live. I've been doing a bunch of YouTube lives lately and I got to say, um, if, if just making YouTube videos is, is satisfying the YouTube live thing as much effort as it is, because I basically just like pass out afterwards because my brain's so tired. The YouTube live thing I found to be astoundingly satisfying. Uh, nobody watches, or at least nobody watches live, which is fine. I'm, I'm not, I don't expect anybody to, but the, what I, how I treat YouTube live is I, I take an idea and I, I treat it exactly like I would treat it in a writer's room or a writer's group or a workshop or working with a writing partner or even by myself. And, um, I don't see anybody else doing that and it's real rough edges, but I'll tell you right now, um, as far as authenticity, as far as the fact that, you know, this guy can't write line read, I can barely even look at the camera. Um, for some reason on the YouTube lives, when I'm just in pure creative mode, uh, good vibes, good vibes. I hope it's not as boring uh, to you guys as it is to me trying to watch it back. But I'll tell you right now, I, you know, if you're, if you wonder, if you're wondering what it's like to work with me in a writer's room, that's what I look like. Uh, so, you know, um, yeah, so I, 
I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm grateful for YouTube, but it's given me an opportunity to play in a sandbox. And now that I can get a little bit of uh, get a little bit of feedback as I'm going, um, that's made such the difference that people are people are both positively and negatively responding to stuff. Um, I don't think I'm going to go back to any of those emotional appeal videos where I talk about X, you know, famous person just because uh, it, it it's it's a uh, it's asking for trouble. But I'm into it. Um, I would never I would never not do this because I I'm I'm into it. And even though it's physically unsettling for me to be sitting in front of the camera talking. Uh, I I like everything else about it, and so if the if the trade off is f being physically unsettled, uh, but I like everything else, I think that's a good deal. So um, do what I did, put yourself out there more. I, do what you're ever gonna do. I mean, do what you're gonna do. I I would never I would never tell you to do that um, as someone who is not into that. But it worked for me this year. Um, like, share, subscribe. Catch you catch you next time. Year, day, time. Okay, see ya.